careful. This is just not ideal for mountain hiking. I just thought about something, we're rushing by. There is a, a viper species here, so just careful when you're letting it brush, because I know they're gonna be out actively hunting amphibians right now. And in Indonesia, there's a huge lack of anti-venom, so that would uh, make for a really bleak ending. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. If you're going to go field herping yourself, make sure to check local laws and regulations. In addition to that, there's some etiquette that we're going to go over today. So before I hunt for the Burmese python tonight, I'm going to teach you some tips on things like flipping. Let's go. There are some important things you need to know about it and some ethical rules. Rule number one, when you're flipping, you want to make sure you have something to flip stuff with. And notice, I'm not using my hands. There could be an animal right under here. And if I just scoop up with my fingers, good chance I can get bit. So I use a snake hook. This style of snake hook is called a stump ripper. So always flip away from you. And we have ants. That happens a lot. Rule number two, don't ruin anything. If you can't put back what you flipped exactly how you found it, you've just ruined a miniature habitat for animals that lived under that item. So you gotta be really careful when flipping. And then rule number three, have fun. Stay back, stay back. <laughs> Om Talatom. Bule. There's some coconuts over here. I'm gonna check those out. Oftentimes coconuts naturally fall on logs and palm can be great for this kind of thing. Okay, so these coconuts have been here a while. And how do I know that? Because when I flip them, there's great moisture. There's even some roots under them. I see termites, I see spiders. These have been here a long time. There's even white mold. This is perfect. These are well seasoned pieces of cover. I'm gonna get this big one here. Oh shoot, dude, check it out. So this is why you don't use your hands. So this is a Malaysian pit viper. They're really common through agriculturally disturbed areas like this, and they are an ambush predator. So they do bite a lot of people throughout their range, and they have a really gnarly bite. Lots of tissue damage, really nasty thing to get bit by. So it's an unfortunate thing for both the snake and the humans, because they have beautiful snakes. But as you can see, they're not aggressive. Everyone thinks that they're just gonna come and attack you. I'm right here. He's really kind of hoped I haven't seen him. Unfortunately, we are less than 25 meters from a soccer field. So as much as I'd love to give him his home back, because he's got a perfect little shelter here, uh, we're gonna have to, to move him to somewhere further so he doesn't accidentally have a bad end. Because you know, when you have a snake-human conflict, it's bad for the people, it's bad for all snakes' reputations. So we're gonna have to move you, little buddy. I know, you had a nice crib, but it's a little too close to this soccer field here. Typically, when you think of a Burmese python, you think of flat terrain. But actually, in Indonesia, this is one of the few places left you can see them. Unfortunately, human habitation, hunting, and overcollecting has driven Burmese pythons to only exist in a few areas in this country, and they're pretty rare. So here we are in the uphill, rugged terrain of the highlands. And I'm gonna attempt to climb this mountain, despite a severe lack of time on the stair stepper lately. Oh! <laughs> that was not graceful, but managed to get a Malayan or copper racer off the mountain without hurting the snake, or I think myself. So they go by two names. They go by the name copper rat snake or Malayan racer. 
which is kind of a strange name because usually when you think racer, you think diurnal snakes, but these guys are fully nocturnal. It's kind of another great example how common names don't always make the most sense. So the copper rat snake or Malayan racer is directly related to the radiated rat snake, but much, much less common in the pet trade, which is kind of surprising because they're pretty. And as you can tell, a lot better behaved than uh, your typical radiated rat snake. Like most wild snakes, this one's got some battle scars. It's lived a hard life. Life in the wild's not always easy. But man, look at that sheen. That is just a metallic, metallic snake. And then further down the body, it just transitions to this nice, pretty black. So cool. Pretty good disposition. Again, it's a nocturnal terrestrial active hunter. So it's just crawling around looking for food out here. And man, really quite a treat to see. It's important that copper rat snakes have proper substrate. They're really active predators and they're gonna toss it around a lot. So the wrong substrate can be a big problem for these guys. This is one of those snakes you don't hear much about, but when you see them, you really wonder why. Like, why aren't people just stoked on these guys? I would love to play with them more because it's just an amazing animal. But this isn't the animal we came here for. It seems like rain's on its way, so we need to hurry up. I'm gonna let you on your way. There you go. Whoa! Careful. This is just not ideal for mountain hiking. I just thought about something, we're rushing by. There is a, a viper species here, so just careful when you're letting it brush, because I know they're gonna be out actively hunting amphibians right now. And in Indonesia, there's a huge lack of anti-venom, so that would uh, make for a really bleak ending. Oh, sweet dude. Perfect, perfect, come here. Head is over here. Check out what we just found. That is a beautiful animal. That is a beautiful, beautiful snake. Its head is right there in the back. You see it? So this is the Burmese python. In Indonesia, they're protected. That's why I'm not picking it up. That's why I'm not handling it because I'm not allowed to. And I'm okay with that. So while the snake is sitting here real nice and calm, we're gonna take some measurements. Okay. Burmese pythons are huge snakes that live in very humid environments, which means they need a lot of water. Giving these guys a large water bowl is a must and giving them bedding that's gonna hold that moisture is also important. When a snake of this size eats a big meal, it's gonna need a lot of heat to digest. So heating is essential. One other thing I'd like to note about this habitat here is it's open and huge. Of course it is, it's the wild. But this snake doesn't have fat rolls and he looks a lot more muscular than the captive ones I normally see. Which makes me think, if you're gonna keep a Burmese python, give it some room. This isn't a rack animal. It needs space, it needs to exercise and stretch out. This is definitely an advanced keeper species and not for beginners. There's something special about sitting next to a wild animal and having it watch you and you watch it. I can only imagine what it's thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. This was cool. So while rain is good for amphibians, it's not good for flat-footed primates with expensive cameras. On the bright side, I've been wearing the same pants for two weeks. So this is the closest thing to laundry I've had so far. 